Today's episode is all about tea. I'm going to share how to make tea the proper way and how to make your own decoupage tea chest. Stay tuned till the end to find out if you are the lucky winner of the framed botanical prints. Now before we begin, I know that a lot of people do want to know about tea etiquette and the proper way to drink tea. And I always say that for me, as long as everybody who's joining me for tea is having fun and a really nice time, that is the most important thing. And I think that sometimes we can get so bogged down with rules and worrying whether we're doing the things the proper way that we really are very stiff, we don't enjoy the occasion and it kind of takes away the shine of what tea is supposed to be which is a really really fun occasion with friends or family where you can sit and enjoy tea sandwiches and cakes and what is more beautiful than that so if you're worried about the rules i would say forget the rules the main rule is to just enjoy yourself because if you're not having fun then what is the point so for me this video is not really about rules and etiquette it's more about how we can enjoy tea in the traditional way because that is what makes it so appealing but still have a really fun and enjoyable time. So here we have some typical English breakfast tea and this is tea bags. So it comes in a four pack and you just get a tea bag like this and you would drop it into the cup or your teapot pour on the water and you would serve. So this is the tea that most people drink every day. This here is loose leaf tea and this comes usually in a tin like this or a box and you actually get the tea loose and you put it into the teapot, brew it and then you have a tea strainer so that none of the tea goes into your drink because it's not nice to drink these leaves. Now the difference between loose leaf tea and tea bags is the quality. Now, tea bags have a different processing method, so you kind of lose some of the quality of the tea, whereas loose leaf tea is tea in its closest to its original form, so you're gonna keep the richness and the quality of the tea, so it really does taste a lot better than using a tea bag. But, I have to say, we have so many good options for teas nowadays that even tea bag tea tastes really, really nice if you brew it properly. And that just means brewing it for three minutes so that it's not too weak and not over stewing the tea so that it's too strong. So this is probably my favorite loose leaf tea and it's an Earl Grey French Blue. And the interesting thing about this is that somebody actually gave me this as a gift on a first date. And although the date didn't work out, we are still friends. I thank them for this because this has become a real favourite tea of mine. And Earl Grey has always been one of my favourite teas, but the fragrance, the aroma from this, it's like a luxurious gift just to have it in your house. So this tea is very expensive, but it lasts a very long time. You only need one teaspoon per cup or per pot per person, so it will last you at least six months. So this is the tea that I am gonna be drinking today, and it's a tea that I would highly recommend. Now the key for getting a really good cup of tea is in the water temperature. Black teas and herbal teas are the only ones that can withstand boiling water, so if you want to have green tea or white tea, you need to make sure that when you boil the water, you're gonna let it cool, for at least 10 minutes. Otherwise, you will burn the leaves and you'll get a really horrible, bitter tea. And actually, I was drinking green tea the wrong way for about two years, and I kept persisting because I wanted to be really healthy and drink green tea. And deep down I was thinking, what is the rage about green tea? It tastes awful. And then I learned that you need to let the water cool and the tea will taste a lot better, and it really does. So it's very important to get the water temperature correct. So remember, with black teas and herbal teas, they can withstand boiling water. Green teas, white teas, they need to let the water cool for at least 10 minutes. 
so that the leaves do not burn. So I think that we should have a nice cup of tea. Now, another good tip to make sure that you're getting the best from your tea is to make sure that the teapot is warmed before you serve the tea. Now, what you need to do is boil the kettle, fill the teapot with boiling water, let it sit for about two minutes, pour the water back out, and then your teapot is properly warmed. So I have just done that and my boiling water is in this silver teapot because it's a lot prettier than having the kettle on the table. And also when I'm having guests for tea, I always have a pot of boiling water to the side so that when the teapot's running low, you can easily fill it back up. So my teapot has been warmed and now I'm gonna add the tea. So the general rule of thumb with loose leaf tea and tea bags is to add one teaspoon, heaped teaspoon of loose leaf tea per person and one for the pot. So if you're having three people around the table, it'd be three teaspoons of tea and another one for the pot. As it's just me, because we're in a lockdown, I am having one teaspoon of tea and one for the pot. Now I am going to Pour the boiling water into the pot. And I'm going to let that brew for three minutes. I am having Earl Grey today, so usually you serve that with little slices of lemon but you can also have milk if you want. Now, a few people are a little bit snobby about that. They think that you should only have lemon in your Earl Grey, but as always, you know me, I tell you just to do what you like. Try both, whatever you prefer, do that. Now, also, I don't have sugar, but if you do have sugar, I always think that it's really nice to serve sugar cubes because it just adds to the sense of occasion and fun, and it's not something you would use every day, but it's nice just to be able to use your little tongs and just to pop the sugar into the cup. I think it's very sweet. Now the tea set that I'm using today is this Wedgwood, and it's probably the favorite one that I have. It was a Christmas gift about six years ago, and I just think it's so delicate and pretty and also very timeless. I just love the beautiful little butterflies, the colors. It's just a real favorite and I love that when you hold it up to the light, you can see right through it. And that is the benchmark for good quality china. So I have teacups and saucers. I have the teapot. I also have these little cake plates and when I don't use them, so if, like I'm just having a cup of tea now, so I'm just using it to put on my napkin. I also have the sugar bowl and the milk jug. And this is also here a little sandwich plate. Again, when I'm not using that for sandwiches, I'll use it as a little tray to put on the milk and the sugar. Now, one of the questions I get asked a lot is whether you should pour the milk or the tea first. Now, of course, it's totally up to you. But the reason in the olden days that people used to pour the milk first, it was usually the working classes who couldn't afford proper china. So if they poured boiling water into their cup, it would crack. So pouring the milk first and then the tea wouldn't be as hot and it wouldn't break their cup. Whereas bone china is designed to withstand boiling temperatures. So you can easily pour the tea straight into the cup and it will be absolutely fine. But again, if you like to pour the milk first, go ahead, do your thing. I think this has been brewing for over three minutes, so let's pour it in. With loose leaf tea, you need to make sure that you have a tea strainer like this, otherwise you will get lots of tea leaves in your tea, which is never a pleasant thing. And actually, I love having a tea strainer because again, it adds to the sense of occasion. It's not something you're gonna use every day, so it feels like a fun, special treat. Now with this teacup, it is in a regular shape, so I have to make sure that I put it on in a very particular way, otherwise it will fall into the cup, like that. So let me try again. There we go, there we go. So I'm just, 
going to pour the tea directly onto there and it will catch all of the tea leaves so that we don't get them into the cup. And we'll take it off. We'll have a slice of lemon. And I think that's a really nice cup of tea. Perfect. One final thing before we end this section of the video. In my last tea video where I showed you how to create the perfect afternoon tea at home, I did briefly touch on some of the rules with tea. And um, one of the main things is just so that you have a better time when you are stirring your tea with a spoon, instead of doing this around the cup which makes a noise and isn't very nice, you can just treat the teacup like a clock. And if you treat this as 12, this is six, stir the tea by moving backwards and forwards between 12 and six, and you're not gonna get any clanging noises. It's a lot more pleasant. The next thing is, and I've got no idea where this comes from, but a lot of people think that you are supposed to hold the cup and stick out your pinky finger. This is not the correct way to drink your tea and you will look like a fool. So my advice is hold the cup as you would normally. It's a lot easier than having to strain your little finger and you won't be having everybody laughing at you because you're trying to be pretentious. So just enjoy the tea as you would. Looking through old magazines is the best place to find pictures or illustrations for your decoupage box. For about three years I was subscribed to the World of Interiors and this magazine is filled with unique and interesting images to use. Cut out a variety of images in different sizes so that you have options for your box. Sometimes a cutout you really like doesn't fit so it's always best to have plenty of choice. Next, you will need to remove all of the hardware on your box, the clasp that closes the lid, and also the hinges, so you can easily paint the box. Keep them in an envelope so you don't lose them. I always like to buy small tester pots of paint, as they come in really useful for projects like this. Today I'm using Farron Ball Palmer Grey, which is a very elegant blue. I'm going to paint the whole box, including the inside. You'll probably need two coats of paint. I let each coat dry for around 30 minutes before applying the next one. Once the paint is completely dry, it is time to start applying glue. I'm using a standard PVA glue. Not only is it good for sticking down your pictures, it also acts as a protective layer when you apply it over your finished project. Now I am carefully going to position my cutting into place. You need to work quickly and precisely as it will immediately stick and you won't be able to make adjustments. Once it is down you can take the glue brush and firmly apply pressure to prevent air bubbles from making creases.
I have decided to use a gold paint to add a border around the lid of my box. This is a good idea if the cutting you're using doesn't exactly fit. It also gives a more pleasing look. Do you remember this star ribbon from my Christmas wreath? I am going to use it to trim the lid of my box. I think it's the perfect finishing touch. Again, it will stick down easily with glue and you can even apply a thick layer over it. And once it dries, it will become translucent. I'm leaving a gap in the middle for the clasp of the lid. Now I'm going to paint the inside of the box in the same gold paint that I used for the lid. I did consider leaving it natural, but I think this looks better. If you're going to store tea in your box, make sure you use a non-toxic paint. To finish, I'm applying this Annie Sloan clear wax over the whole thing. You can't really see on film, but the difference it makes is really amazing. It brings the wood to life and gives it a smooth freshness. I would suggest leaving this box to dry overnight before fixing back the hardware, and that is it. You are done. You have a new, beautiful decoupage box that you can store your tea and biscuits. If you want a little more inspiration, here are two other decoupage boxes that I made a few years ago. I really like these two, I think they're very different but both beautiful. And it really shows what you can do with a little imagination. I'm delighted to announce that the winner of our three framed botanical prints is Amanda Alloway. Amanda, we will email you shortly to verify your details and congratulations. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you all next week.